Hello and welcome to this solo game of Blucher where I'm playing the Battle of Quatre de Bras. Fought on the 16th of July 1815. It was the first major action between the French uh, forces under Napoleon and the Allied forces under Wellington and also uh, Blucher as well. So this was fought two days before the Battle of Waterloo and it was uh, the French Second Corps under Michael Ney. Uh, Marshal Ney, the bravest of the brave, attacking up the road through the uh, aforementioned Quatre Bras crossroads. So we have Quatre Bras itself. This is one of the objectives for the French. Uh, this is currently garrisoned by the 2nd uh, Nassau second of 2nd second Division under Barnard, and they are also protected by Bildant uh, in Bossal Wood to the right here. Uh, they are currently commanded by uh, the Prince of Orange but he will at some point turn into uh, the Duke of Wellington. Uh, facing them down the road we have currently the French forces of 2nd Corps. These were under uh, Marshal Ney. At the moment they only have uh, four of their bases on the board uh, along with the 11th Cavalry Division under Le Hittier. Uh, these are a uh, second uh, unit, so they're not part of 2nd Corps, and they will activate on their own. And you can see from the board here we've got Bossal Wood. Uh, it has a track running up the centre of it. Uh, it wasn't as wide as that in real life, but this is just for game terms, so you can actually get a unit up into it. Uh, the French are attacking up the road, as we said. Uh, through this farm here and all the way up to Quatre Bras itself, which is one of the objectives. The second objective is the Namur Road, which runs across the table. So if we can cut that off, that's going to give the French uh, a bit of a victory. Uh, we also have these two areas of heights here. Uh, the one in the foreground being the heights of... The one in the foreground is the heights of Gemicourt, and then we also have the heights of Batty Saint Bernard at the back of here. So just to give you a look at what the actual map looks like, this is how I've set it up. I think most of the action is going to take place up here around Quatre Bras itself, so the rest of the table is pretty empty. So the French reinforcements, uh, of which there are five brigades, will be arriving on various turns turn 18 and 22 mostly. The Allied reinforcements, much bigger, four more of these and these are going to be turning up over the next few turns. So given the large amount of Allied reinforcements that are on their way and will be turning up, the French have got a real imperative to get across this board and get into and capture both the road and Quatre Bras itself. So let's see how we get on. So pretty poor effort straight away. The French have rolled their momentum dice, uh, getting three. Normally this is kept secret by the uh, opposing player, but because I'm playing solo, I can't really do that. Uh, but I know that three, I can move three units. So I'm going to activate this core first of all, core two. That will actually cost me one, two, three, four, five momentum points. So that will take me over the limit and I won't be able to do anything else. But let's get these moving. So I've taken advantage of the reserve move to get these units up as quick as possible. These have come all the way up here, up the up the Namo Road. Uh, reserve moves means that you have to stop within four base widths of uh, an enemy. And as you can see, we are within the four base widths of that enemy for all of those now. So, so the Allies have rolled seven for their momentum dice. Uh, they're not probably going to move these two anyway, they're just going to sit where they are. Uh, the units in Bossar Woods are in the prepared position and we've also got the uh, units here already in their, uh, in Quattro Bar itself. So there's no, literally no point at this point moving either of these. So immediately the Allies can bring on their very first reinforcements which is the 2nd Netherland Light Cavalry under Merlin. These will move up to two base widths onto the board from the edge of the table, which will bring them to about there. 
uh, they've got plenty of points to do that with so that's that's them done that. So the French have rolled an 8, they've brought on 3 in reinforcements as part of a core move so that's uh, 3 that's come on there so that knocks them down to 5 points left so they've got a choice now they can either move the rest of the second core or they can move up the uh, independent cavalry here to try to take that road. Uh, we can leave them for a bit. I'm going to try to move the rest of this corps instead. So they pushed a bit further forward. The uh, guard lanciers have pushed up towards the outskirts of Quattro Bra itself, ready to attack, as have the second cavalry uh, division under Pierre. I've got the guns up onto the top of the heights here, so they should be able to start firing next turn, and then also the infantry are pushing up just behind uh, as quick as they can. Uh, so that uses up all of that momentum, so it's over to the Allies. So the Allies have now got nine, so what we're going to do is we're going to do an individual movement for this, uh, the second Devil, the Netherland uh, Light Cavalry, we're going to try to move them to the left of Quattro Bra to try and hold the uh, the area there. And then we're also going to bring on some more of the Allied reinforcements. But because I'm not doing these as a core move, it's going to cost quite a lot of momentum. So it's going to cost two per uh, per unit, it's per, per brigade. So that's going to be six, seven, eight. But that's enough we've got. So now we have on the Allied side, we've, uh, Thomas Picton has turned up with his 5th Division. They've all arrived from the road from Brussels. So they're now facing these French on the other side of Quatre Bras. So it's the firing phase for the Allies. The uh, Dutchmen in Quatre Bras itself can't fire out because they're part of a garrison. However, these chaps in Basel Woods can fire and they are going to. So they're going to fire at the light cavalry they're rolling five dice because their line is five they're within volley fire they've also got an attached artillery so that gives them six dice so they need sixes on any of these dice to cause casualties on those guards lanterns so that's one casualty so this affects the elan of the guard lanterns and we cross off eight they're now down to seven still pretty good though so the next French turn, they've rolled seven dice. So what they're going to do is move these up and then start attacking with these. Unfortunately, cavalry can't attack into the uh, into the garrison, but there are some uh, allied cavalry there that we can hopefully try to sweep away and maybe attack into the woods as well there. So the rest of uh, two corps have moved further up the road a little and it's getting a bit messy over here. So we've got the guard light cavalry attacking into the woods and against the Netherland conscripts. So that may go pretty well for them. And we've also got the second cavalry division uh, attacking the Netherland cavalry as well. Uh, I've also pull, pulled up the two infantry brigades ready to hopefully assault into Quattro Bra itself next turn. So let's see what these uh, actions bring us. So the Dutch are on uh, 5 Ilan, so they start with 5 defence dice. However, they're in difficult terrain, so they lose one. They're also conscripts against cavalry, so they lose a further one. So they're rolling rolling 3 in their defence dice. And they need 4, 5s and 6s uh, for, for their defence score. So that's 1 in defence. So the French cavalry are starting with 7, because that's their Ilan. They lost one from the shooting. However, they're charging into uh, difficult terrain, so that's a minus one. But they also have shock, so they get a plus one. So they're back to seven. They need four, fives, and sixes. So that's one, two, three, four. Minus the Dutch one. So they actually cause three uh, damage on the Dutch infantry. So the result of that combat means that the Netherlanders have fallen back and the uh, Guard Lancers have moved forward into the wood. Okay, this combat here, we've got the French 2nd Cavalry Division attacking. Uh, they're starting with an land of 6 
against an Elan of five on the uh, the uh, Netherland light cavalry. So this is straightforward. The Netherlanders have rolled four saves. That's good. Against the French of six dice. And they've got four saves as well. Uh, four attacks. So four versus four is net zero. So this means that the Netherlanders take uh, one fatigue, but they're okay. Uh, whereas the French take two fatigue and they also retreat. Okay, situation at the end of this turn is the French cavalry have had a reasonably good success on this side and <laughs> a moderate failure on the other flank. However, the infantry is still in the position ready to take go into Quattro Bra itself, but we do have the, uh, the the British Reserve on their way in, and also that unit of cavalry there is uh, is a bit of a worry. Okay, next turn the Allies have rolled an eleven, so they're going to quickly get this reserves up. Uh, they'll probably attack as well with their cavalry into this massive. Uh, infantry here that are not prepared and not ready and also they now have some more reserves to come on all right not looking so good for the french now we've now got the duke of brunswick with his men in black they've arrived uh, we've pushed forward the reserves right behind quattro bra anyway it's not even been attacked yet and we've also got a uh, french cavalry attack charging into uh, husson's brigade there from the fifth division so let's see how that works out uh, in the firing phase, first of all, we're going to get the uh, Dutch over here to fire into the uh, mass ranks of the Lanciers. See what that does. Two dice, they need a six. No, no, no effect. So, this cavalry attack, the French are rolling six defence dice. However, because they're not prepared, they're not in square, they're going to have to re-roll any of their successors. So that's... Three successes, so we ignore those, and they have to re-roll those. Four fives and sixes, so they've actually only got one success this time. So the <coughs> Dutch cavalry, they're rolling four dice, so they could actually cause up to three casualties here. Four fives and sixes, uh, that's two hits, ignore those two. Uh, so that reduces down to one. So the French lose one Elan and have to retreat. Uh, the Dutch also lose one Elan because they attacked anyway and they can follow up if they like. So the French infantry have retreated back down the down the hill there. Uh, the Dutch cavalry are not going to follow up on them because they've only got three Elan left. So they at this point they're pretty blown to be honest. So uh, we don't want to attack with them again. Probably withdraw them in a second. Here we are at the moment, this is how it looks. Some vicious fighting going on for this crossroads. Okay, the French now have got nine Ilan. They also have some more reserves that they can bring on. So we're going to do that. There's only two left, so that won't cost them a great deal. Okay, so the French Lancers have charged again into the Dutch in the track there in the Bassor Woods. The uh, Campus Brigade of 5th Division are now attacking into Quattroboro itself. We've also turned around the cavalry division ready to attack again this turn. They can't attack this turn. We've shifted up uh, the rest of 2nd Corps here. And also, foot artillery is going to start taking some shots at the cavalry in front of them. And finally, we've taken the Namur Road by shoving forward the 11th cavalry division. Uh, now, they're pretty good, so they may, may want to turn those towards the actual fighting over here down the rest and see what happens with that. So the French artillery is rolling five dice, uh, needs six to hits. Let's see if we can get three hits on that, that will break that unit. <laughs> there isn't even a single one. But because they fired, they reduced their Elan by one. So over here we have the French Guard Lancers, uh, they're starting with a 6, uh, they've got shock but they're also in uh, rough going so that's just going to be 6 dice for them, that's minus 1 for the rough and plus 1 for the shock. However the 
conscripts, uh, the Dutch conscripts have only got a two as part of their, um, because their line is so low. Uh, they're also conscripts against cavalry, so they're actually down to one. So their defence dice, three, no defence. So now we just see, need to see how many hits the French give them. And that's two. And that is enough to break them, because they're already on two. So that unit is gone. So that's one on the Allied side, out to six. That they, uh, if they lose six, they, they will lose again. So it's the combat now in Quattro itself, with the French attacking in with a land of six against the Dutch with a land of six. Now the Dutch have a plus two when it comes to uh, their defence because they're a garrison and the uh, French will have a minus one on their dice. So the Dutch are rolling eight dice in defence. Garrisons are very difficult to actually uh, break. So let's see, so that's five. They've scored five. So the French are rolling five dice. They can't score anything. So they are automatically going to lose. They've lost by three, because they only gained two. So they then lose to Ilan and have to fall back away, pointing away from the garrison. So that's the result of that combat, even though the the Dutch have lost one brigade, they're still holding Quatre Bras, they've pushed back the French twice now, so they're doing okay. Mm, it's probably not what the uh, Anglo-Dutch uh, Anglo wanted at this point, that's only four, four points, so there's not a great deal they can do with that. Okay, with that poor dice rolling, there's not a great deal that the Anglo-Dutch can do. They've moved back their cavalry here uh, to get them out of uh, line of fire. And also, the French uh, brought on the, the, the rest of another set of reserves. Uh, these are now faced down by the Guard Lancers, but they should be okay where they are, I think. Well, painfully, the French have also rolled a terrible momentum. So they've only got four. Uh, they're pretty spread out now. Not a great deal we can do here. Uh, what they may do is attack with the lancers again, and then that's probably going to be them done. We can at least fire with the artillery, and maybe turn some of these infantry around, getting ready at the end for this attack. So, with their dice, they've attacked here, the, the lancers into uh, Halkett's brigade at the front there. They've also turned this unit round ready to start advancing again on Quattro Bra. They've also advanced this unit up and they're also uh, attacked with their cavalry division into the British infantry there right in front of them. And first up, before all that, they're going to take some shots at the Dutch cavalry who have now turned tail. So French artillery rolling four dice, need sixes, and they don't get any. Completely useless. Over here we've got the British infantry. They're not prepared. They've got an Elan of six. Uh, so because they're not prepared against cavalry, this means that they're going to be re-rolling any successes. They're rolling sixes. They haven't got any successes anyway. So the French cavalry are rolling, starting with a five. They've got shock, but they're also in difficult terrain because they're in the woods, so that's down to five. So they just really need as many successes as possible on this. So we've got three there. So that's going to be very painful, I think. So that means that Halkett's division has, uh, his brigade has taken three Ilan off, uh, removes one from the, the French cavalry as well, but they also have to retreat two base widths, and that is going to make them fall off table. So that's another broken unit for the Anglo Allies. Also the French cavalry can move up, so they have done, and now they're facing off against, uh, is it uh, Kegelman's uh, brigade of conscripts. So again over here we've got the French cavalry attacking in. These starting with a line of four against the uh, Kemp's brigade of six. But they're going to be re-rolling any of their successes because they are unprepared. Let's see how we go with that. So 
So that's two successes. So they're re-rolling those. And they're both failures. So the French are now rolling four. I need as many of these as possible to do some damage. That's three. That's good. So that causes one Elan on the French and three on the Brits and they also retreat. That was pretty nasty from the French there. Both French cavalry uh, have shone through in that point. Uh, but they're pretty damaged at this point. Uh, the second cavalry division only has three Elan left and these guys have only got four Elan left. So they're probably not going to be doing much more attacking now. The momentum for the Anglo Allied is nine this turn. So we can do quite a few things here. Unfortunately we've got some more reserves to come on down here, but this is going to get blocked up unless I can shift those cavalry. So the only thing they can really do is prepare themselves. So that's going to cost one momentum. I can't really face off against those French cavalry, but we can fire at them. So that's certainly something that we can do. But again, this is it's a high score for not a great deal of things that can happen over here. Okay, so using that we've prepared the uh, <coughs> the Hanoverians here in case they get attacked, which they probably will do. Uh, we've also charged into the French cavalry with the Brunswick cavalry here and also prepared the uh, fourth Hanoverians as well against any cavalry attacks and also just turned this cavalry unit round just ready to, to face off against that French just in case something happens. So we've only got the one attack of the fresh Brunswickers into the cavalry who are pretty damaged at this point. So they're only rolling three dice. Four, five, sixes are successes. They've got one success and they're being hit with six dice. But they're actually under strength so they're losing a dice. So they're down to five dice. And two successes. So the French cavalry lose one Elan. The Brunswickers also lose one Elan, but the French retreat, facing away from the attack. So the Brunswicks have poured in, uh, pushed the French back. They've only got two Elan left, so they're probably not going to do any more fighting in the rest of this game. Uh, but the Brunswicks have followed up, and they've also now facing off against this French infantry, who again are unprepared, so they may have to spend a turn preparing themselves to uh, attack uh, to, to, to take the attack from the Brunswicks, which is going to happen at any point. These are not great rolls for the momentum dice here. We've got uh, five for the French this time, so again, there's not going to be a great deal of things they can do with that. But let's see what we can do. So, the French have pushed forward a bit more with their infantry here. They've prepared this unit against the Brunswick inevitable cavalry attack, pushing into Quatre Bras again. And the guards' lancers are again attacking into uh, their next unit to see if they can hopefully drive them off the unit, off the table as well. Okay, over here, let's start with the Hanoverians. They start with a five. They're over strength, so they get a plus one. However, they're conscripts, so they get a minus one against cavalry. Uh, but they are prepared as well, so that means they just roll their dice. It means that the French will have to re-roll their successes. So their defence, they've got two. So the French are starting with four. They have shock. So that gives them five. But again, these are re-rolling their successes. So they've got two successes there. They can't win anyway, but they're both successes. So they actually lose to Elan and they have to retreat, whereas the uh, Anaverians will only lose one Elan and stay where they are. I almost forgot, uh, the cannons are firing down on the Brunswick uh, cavalry. They've got two hits on the Brunswicks here, from there to there. So now we've got the attack on Quattro Bra itself. So Campy's Brigade is starting with Four, sorry, the uh, the Dutch are starting with five. They get plus two because they're defending in a garrison. I've not noticed they're actually over strength as well, so they could have got an extra dice, so we'll put that in for them. 
So that's one, two, three, four, five successes. Now the French are not going to be able to beat that because they're starting with four minus one, so that's three. But let's just roll it anyway. See what we get. One success. So the French lose to Ilan and again retreat, but they do wear them down the wear down the Dutch defenders with one Ilan. So here we are with the Anglo Allied turn. They've rolled eight on their momentum dice. So that's going to mean that they can do quite a lot of things with that. So there's been a little bit of moving here. Uh, the Brunswicks have moved forward. Uh, the Hanoverians here are going to move forward a bit. Shifted forward the Hanoverians to start hopefully giving give them some space to get some more reserves on. And uh, 9th Brigade of uh, 5th Division under Pack have attacked the French uh, Lanciers. We're starting with the cavalry. They're on two. Uh, they've got nothing else. Uh, but the British are probably going to re-roll their attacks because they're attacking cavalry. Let's have a look. Uh, two failures anyway. So all the British need to do here is cause two or more hits and they will have destroyed those lancers. So we're starting with uh, seven, which is their Elan. They're under strength, so that drops down to six. As I say, they're re-rolling any successes here. So they need four, fives and sixes. So that's two successes. And they need to re-roll those, and they need to get those again as successes to destroy the guard lancers. And that's neither. So they've been forced back, retreating away from the lancers. That would be a perfect target, but the lancers are almost on their break point, so they can't actually do anything. Uh, so they can't attack anyway. So that's an opportunity that's lost. So the French now have two more turns to capture Quatre Bras. Uh, they rolled a 7. Let's see what that does for us in this turn. They're pretty damaged at this point, but they may be able to, to do some more damage to the, the Allies. It's been a bit of jiggery poker here. Uh, push forward the infantry to try to have another crack, one final crack at Quattro Bra itself. Uh, we've got these, these are going to fire at the uh, the Brunswick Cavalry, as is the guns up on the hill, uh, I've pulled out this unit here because they're pretty shattered at this point. I've also pulled out the French Cavalry because it's for the same reason. And finally, pulled back the Guard Lancers away from uh, any threats over there. They can't take any more hits. First of all, the French Artillery are firing. Uh, they're rolling three. Uh, because they're a volley fire, they will get a bonus shot which means they will get uh, if they roll a five that's also a hit so that's one hit on the cavalry and then we have Husson's brigade firing up there five Ilan they're also firing volley fire so they get an extra shot in there because they're firing skirmish uh, but because they have a penalty because they're infantry firing at cavalry, they half it, so they're only rolling threes as well. So sixes are hits, no hits. And it's the final allied turn, they've just rolled double one, so basically they can do probably very, very little there. Let's see, we can at least probably get, well can't even get any, any more of the, uh, the reserves on. So we've got to one. So basically that means all they're going to do is literally turn around this brigade. So they're back in in the fight. And bring forward the Brunswick is here to try to frighten the French artillery. And the French final turn, they've got a five. So with this, they will attack once more into Quatre Bras. They will move these guys forward. And also just lay down some fire from the artillery and from the 
infantry here. There's not a great deal more they can do at this point. So the first shots here against the Brunswick uh, cavalry, and that's no hits. And the second shots from the cannons, that's one hit. So that's pretty badly damaged the Brunswicks at least. And then the final assault into Quattro Bra again, just as the night is falling. Uh, the defenders are on four, plus two, and they are also overstrength, so that's another one. So again, we're needing four and above. Three, the attackers are attacking on a six. Minus one because they're attacking into the urban. And that's three, three for three. It means the French lose two, they fall back. The Dutch lose one. But hold on, the French will fall back to around about here, and that finishes the Battle of Quatre Bras. With Quatre Bras still in Allied hands, although the French did capture the Neville Road, I don't think that's really going to count towards their victory at all. Uh, most of the French units at this point were either battered or on their way out. Uh, there was very few, a couple of fresh units at the back still hadn't moved. The guard lancers were really badly hammered. And then over here, for the British, uh, which had taken quite a lot of casualties amongst a lot of these, the chaps, uh, the Nassau unit in Quattro Bra itself held, still had three Ilan left. We're still unable to actually bring on four of the fresh reserve troops as well because we just didn't have the space to bring them on on the road. So I'm going to say overall that was probably an allied victory despite it being incredibly hard fought, hard fought on the French side. Well thanks for watching this, hope you enjoyed it. Another great game of Blucher. Uh, please stay tuned to the channel, subscribe for future after action reports.